Okay, so again, just to back up and set this up, um, set this up again, uh, we're going to take the first few minutes of class here and just talk about the five party eras. The first party era, as I started to say, is divided, but we still consider it to be one era. So it runs from Texas independence from Mexico in 1836 to the defeat of the Confederate States of America and the American Civil War. During that period, the Democratic Party was the only viable party in Texas politics. The dominance was interrupted only by an artificially imposed period of Republican Party control from the Reconstruction period, during the Reconstruction period. From the end of Reconstruction until the 1930s, Texas was once again a one-party Democratic state because of its association with the Union victory in the Civil War and Reconstruction. The Republican Party was anathema to most native white Southerners. In late 19th and early 20th centuries, the Democratic Party was under control of conservative upper in income, lar uh, income white elite of large landowners and industrialists who believed that government should promote the state's economic development through low taxes, limited public spending, and oppose most government economic regulations. Okay, so when you think about this first party era, one party Democratic dominance, but conservative, very, very conservative, okay? Uh, the second period runs from the 1930s to the 1950s. This is the period that we refer to as Democratic Party factionalism. It's still one party Democratic, but we, get, we began to see these identifiable, um, uh, liberal, this identifiable liberal faction to compete with the conservative dominance of the Democratic Party. The liberal wing of the Texas Democratic Party had some successes during the 1930s as the Great Depression caused many Texans to question the wisdom of the state's conservative public policies. However, by the time we get to the 1940s, we began to see the conservative wing of the Democratic Party reestablishing as the clearly dominant wing of the, of the party. Right? But you have the, the, at least the seeds of some progressive liberal slash progressive slash liberal um, agenda, okay? This is, for example, the era that gives uh, rise to LBJ, right? LBJ is elected to Congress in the 1930s. He's very much a new dealer, Franklin, in the mold of Franklin Roosevelt. That's really sort of the origins of the liberal faction of the Democratic Party in Texas. The third era, we see uh, conservative Democrats and liberal Democrats and now an emerging Republican Party in Texas. So, for example, the first, I might have mentioned this to you all in the previous class meeting, but the first Republican elected to a statewide office in Texas after Reconstruction didn't happen until 1960 when Republican John Tower was elected to the United States Senate from Texas. Okay, so that's this period here that we're talking about, but it's also the same period that we get this energized liberal wing of the Democratic Party led by Senator Ralph Yarborough. Liberal Democrats gained strength during this era, era because the electorate was changing, the Democratic electorate was changing. As we talked in the previous week, last week's class sessions, the legal barriers to voting were coming down. Um, that were key, you know that had previously kept African Americans, Latinos, and poor whites away from the polls, and that meant added strength for the liberal faction of the Democratic Party. It also the liberal wing of the party also benefited from th this is the period where we began to see some defections of conservative Democrats to the Republican Party, okay, with the successes of Republican presidential candidates in the 1950s in Texas, specifically Dwight Eisenhower, uh, we began to see a lot of those, some of those conservative Democrats began to move over, certainly when we're talking about um, presidential elections. Okay, the fourth party era runs from 1978 to 1994. This is a period of transition from one party Democratic dominance to one party Republican dominance. I can remember in the 1980s when I first 
started my illustrious professorial career, <clears throat> we would come into classes like this and, you know, the conversation was oftentimes about how Texas was becoming a two-party state because not only had we had John Tower elected to the United States Senate back in 1960, but by the time we get to the 1970s, we start getting more and more Republicans elected to statewide offices. Most conspicuously, Bill Clements was elected governor, um, the first Republican in 100 years, elected governor of the state of Texas. But it's not just in the governor's office. We, we see that in many statewide offices. And of course, Republicans are gaining strength in the state legislature as well. Okay? So um, a lot of my colleagues, I was very young at that time, and uh, who was I to challenge the more established scholarship in my discipline? A lot of my older colleagues were arguing that, well, Texas was moving to a period of two-party competition because it seemed that way, right? Because we were getting both Democrats and Republicans elected to office in Texas at the same time. Um, not that I had any special insight, but my intuition didn't do any studies or anything. I can't claim any scientific uh, basis for this, but my intuition sort of told me that, well, maybe it's too soon. Right? So, yeah. And as it turned out, it, we really weren't becoming a two-party state. We were just transitioning from one-party Democratic dominance to one-party Republican dominance. Okay. So that's this period here from the mid late 1970s to the mid 1990s, where it looks like you're getting both Democrats and Republicans elected to offices in Texas, but it's really just that a lot of those, those conservative Democrats are really beginning to move over in large numbers now to the Republican Party. I, I may have mentioned this to you all in a previous class meeting, there were, there were quite a few Texas politicians, names that you will probably recognize that started their political careers as Democrats, conservative Democrats. Okay, everybody knows the name Rick Perry, right? When Rick Perry was first elected to the Texas State Legislature, he was elected as a Democrat. Okay, but he's just one of many. Uh, any of you recognize the name Phil Graham? Yeah. Phil Graham was elected to the United States Senate from Texas in 1984 as a Republican, but just a few years earlier, he had run for the U.S. House of Representatives as a Democrat. Okay. He, Phil Graham was initially elected to Congress as a Democrat, and then he switched over when he ran for the United States Senate in, in 1984 uh, to run as a Democrat, or, or excuse me, to run as a Republican. Okay, so, you know, uh, John Connolly, the former governor of Texas, uh, had been elected governor of the state as a Democrat, and then he ran for president in 1980 as a Republican. All right, so this is, that's the period where you begin to see a lot of conservative Democrats moving in large numbers uh, over to the Republican Party. Okay? All right. Now, the fifth party era, the last, um, the last era that the um, authors of your textbook mentioned, is an era of Republican dominance. So we mark this beginning in 1994. Who knows why we begin this in 1994? 1994 was the last year that any Democrat was elected to a statewide office. Okay? The last Democrat elected to a statewide office. Well, there were actually two. One was Martha Whitehead. She was elected state treasurer in uh, 1994. But I think the only reason that Martha Whitehead won her office was because she campaigned. She was a one-issue candidate. She campaigned promising Texas voters that if she was elected, she would work to abolish the office of the state treasurer. <laughs> Which if you can, you know, campaign telling Texans that you'll abolish some part of government, they're probably going to jump on board with that. Right? And the other was the Attorney General Dan Morales, who served out his term, but no Democrats have been elected to statewide office. Then. So, so, so this is the year that George W. Bush was elected governor of Texas. He defeated, um, he defeated the popular governor, Ann Richards. And Richard's popularity was pretty high uh, at, at the time that she lost that election to George W. Bush. And that signaled to a lot of people, oh, Texas is just, uh, it's just firmly in the Republican camp at this point, right? All right, now, 
is a, there are six party era coming in Texas. Some observers have argued that we're moving into a new phase in Texas party politics. And maybe it's aspirational. Maybe they're being hopeful. I don't know. But one such uh, scholar who has made the argument that Texas appears to be moving in that direction is none other than Richard Murray, who's a political science professor at the University of Houston. I happened to attend a lecture that he gave about 10 years ago down at the LBJ School in Austin. It also happened to be recorded and it's now linked up for us and we can watch it together. Okay, so that's what we're going to do for the rest of the class. I'm just going to let this lecture play. But, and then we can talk about it in depth on Thursday. We may have a little bit of time at the end. I will see how much time we have, but most of our discussion will have to occur during Thursday's class meeting. Okay, but ahead of time, well, here's what I want to tell you to look for. Okay, as he's, as he's giving his talk here, pay close attention, take good notes. Okay, and I, be, be sure that you can, um, he's going to be pretty, pretty clear about it, I think, but you know, you want to pick up on the demographic trends that he identifies, um, the trends in voter turnout that he talked that he's talking about, okay, and then you want to pay attention to what he argues is a top-down strategy to permit the Democratic Party to return as a competitive force in Texas politics, and what he identifies as a bottom-up strategy. They, but top down and bottom up. He says there are two different strategies which the Democratic Party might pursue in order to return as an electoral force in Texas politics. He's speaking as a political scientist, not as an advocate for Democratic Party politics. In other words, what I mean by that is, like many political scientists, he's convinced that whether they're Democrats or Republicans, convinced that competition is good for our system of government, that whenever you have one party that dominates the system, it's really not a great thing, right? So it's better all the way around if you have a competitive Democratic Party um, in Texas. Okay, so let's watch his presentation. I hope this will play.